so welcome everybody. It's great to see that there are so many people coming to our fourth annual meeting. For those who haven't met me at the previous meetings, you are completely new to, to us. My name is Veronica McKillop and I chair the UK IPv6 Council. So we do about once a year a big event, which is a day focused on IPv6 and different topics. And this is one of them. So can I just ask people to raise hands who were at the previous meetings or the last three? Wow, that's a good turnout. I would say it's like 40% of the room, something like that. So it's great. And the rest means that you are new to us, which is welcome. Great. Um, so can I ask the AV guys to give me the agenda slides, not the update slides, please? The magic happens at the back. Yeah, here we go. So this is what's ahead of us for this morning. Um, we will, I will do a brief update on where UK is in terms of IPv6 and hopefully give you a couple of points that are interesting to think about when, if you are in the stage of deploying IPv6 or even if you are just preparing for that. Then we've got four ISPs and a content provider, BBC, giving their updates on where they are with IPv6. Then we've got a really special um, slot which is for gym bound ipv6 awards because for the first time we've got uh, multiple companies that have been recognized for the uh, v6 deployment well, in the past we had uh, so far only sky that received this award we will have we have this time multiple companies receiving it then uh, it's professor misha dollar from king's college who's going to talk about 5g and why ip is important for 5G or IP, how it's transforming the mobile world. And we will conclude the morning session with a presentation from Ed Orley about better operational outcomes through network design. Then we've got two slots in the afternoon, a presentation from Mikhail from Facebook talking about their IPv6 deployment. Uh, Eric Wing, who is arriving on Eurostar, I think at this point to St. Pancras, he will be talking about v6 multi-homing. And uh, the first block will be concluded by Georgios from Cosmod. He's our, um, that's a Greece ISP. And as we know, if you ever watch the statistics, Greece is doing pretty well when it comes to V6 deployment. So Georgios will share how, how they've, uh, they've achieved it. After some mince pies, they are waiting in the back room. They will be ready in the afternoon. We will have NRA talking about IPv6 security and why actually is that so hard. So he'll give us probably a slightly different look than the traditional IPv6 security talk. And then we've got here David Holler, who has been training people about IPv6 for, I would say, probably 15 years, even more. 20, there you go. So he has heard many reasons why not IPv6, you know. So what are the blockers? He will give us his um, a short talk about this and then hopefully you will join us also in a discussion at the end. The very important thing is that you all have received or should have received service. So well, answer them during the day if you can. And if, when you, if, when you give, give them to us, return them in the afternoon, we'll have a prize draw at the end. And we've got a couple of books to give away, IPv6 books. So that's a, that's a way how we encourage you to fill those service. Um, the slides were circling uh, earlier, so you know that there is an auditorium events, Wi-Fi, and then there is a password BTCA event. Thank you very much for displaying that. And we will have, uh, we do multiple events a year, and you can see information about that on our council website. So I think, could I please ask for the update slides? The guys are running hard at the back. Thank you very much. So when I, when I prepare these slides, I always try to look back because it's so easy to kind of get stuck in the rut and think, oh, things are not going that well. So it's always good to look at what we have achieved, right? So when I stood at the annual meeting 13 months ago, because that was October 2016, at that point, the council had about 440 members. And the membership for us counts people who join our LinkedIn group, right? We don't have any formal process, there are no fees, this all is for free. We organize all these events for free. There are people who come and, and, and help us out like BT is doing this time and providing us with events. So over the last 12, 13 months, we have another 100, over 120 people that actually join our LinkedIn group. So 
our membership base has grown. We have organized two roundtable discussions. One was, these are small scale discussions. So for people who are new to this, we do one big meeting, like this day long event uh, a year. And then we try to do multiple small um, events, which are for about 20 people. So there are different topics that we discuss and uh, everybody has an opportunity to chip in because here you are more on kind of like this receive mode. Hopefully you will also participate in questions, you know, in our discussions. But uh, those roundtable um, events, they are really for everybody to jump in and share their opinion or their experience. What we did, sli did slightly differently this year, we had uh, one topic focus day and that was probably our most successful uh, event we had so far in the three and a half years of existence of the Council. And that was focused entirely on IPv6 security. Are some people who were at the event in July? I see about 20 hands, that's really good. So for those who haven't been here, we actually booked out completely capacity of this room. So this has 770 seats. We had over 120 tickets taken within two weeks. And I was like, oh, this is a really hot topic, really good. And then on the day, about 130 people attended, which is great. This is the highest attendance we've got. I expect today we will be probably about 100 of us. We've got 135 people registered for the event, but there is the usual dropout. So we, I expect today 100, 100 people. And here I also need to say again, big thanks to BT, because over the years they were always giving hard, getting hard time that they don't do anything with V6, you know, and some of you might know Neil McRae who likes to um, say his opinion quite openly, but this year they have they've done a great thing because the second time they are hosting us and as a council doesn't have any income, we are just a group of volunteers who pull these events together. So I have to give a big shout out to Tim Chown, who is my co-chair sitting here at the front. You can smile and wave. He just, he just waves there. And then there is a Nick from BT who, is, who was manning all the logistics, catering and dealing with the event center, which is great help for me because in past I used to do that. So where, where was UK? When the council started, when we had the first meeting in 20, September 2014, this is what you could see from the Google perspective. They saw about 0.2% of user traffic in the UK on IPv6. Well, three years on, we have progressed quite significantly. So this is the statistics from yesterday, and we have grown to almost 20%. That's the Google statistics, and some of you might know that there are different ways, like people measure the visas traffic differently, so I've got that as well. But I would say this is a great achievement, and we know that this has happened. There were always guys who have been chipping away on IPv6, and some of them will speak today, and they will be also recognized, like Andrews and Arnolds. Uh, Bogons, those Janet who deployed v6 many many years ago but because they don't have the user base using IPv6 they couldn't move the needle as significantly as when Sky enabled over 5 million users so that's what pushed us to about 16 percent that was the status last year so this year we can see much slower growth but we know it's thanks to BT who are chipping away at adding uh, dual stack support for the BT home hubs right so we can expect now that the traffic is going to be like the levels will be just climbing slightly and we are waiting for the next big guys like Virgin Media or TalkTalk Talk. when they enable V6 in their networks we will see again another significant growth in the UK. From Upnink perspective they do a diff slightly different type of measurement you can see that very Britain we have made it to the top 10 so currently they see over one in four of users of the internet on, in the UK can access content on IPv6. So if you've got anybody in your organization and you are still like trying to put a business case together saying like there is not enough v6 traffic, not v6 deployment on the internet, they are wrong. Like one in four users in the UK can access it, uh, can access content on IPv6. That's a number that can't be just dismissed uh, in, a, in a simple way. From the global perspective, I would like to make a few points as well here. World IPv6 launch day was five years ago, right? The World IPv6 launch was five years ago. At that point, the whole world was at 0.64%. Now, what has changed in five years is actually pretty significant because in July, globally, we have hit over 20% again. So that's one in five users in the world can access content on IPv6. And yes, if you watch the statistics, you will see that the curve is gonna flatten because the growth is probably not gonna be as fast, it's gonna be slower for a while. 
but it's growing constantly. As you can see here at the bottom, I've got stats from yesterday. The, the lowest uh, amount of traffic seen now is 17.7% and the highest, the peak is 21.4%. And the reason is you can see that the, that the curve is kind of like growing and it's kind of oscillating. That's the difference between weekend and weekdays because at home we've got IPv6, at work we don't. So now we know where the problem is. ISPs are doing their bit, they have done it, and they just continue pushing on because they are the ones who feel the pain with not having an IPv4. Now it's up to the enterprises and small businesses to deploy IPv6 or use their content providers to expose their content on IPv6 or like hosting providers who enable v6 by default. So that's why we will see the, the, the interval actually increasing and there's the oscillation. So in case anybody asks you, you know why. I would also say it's worthwhile watching the uh, NRO uh, video, which actually has been published for the fifth uh, anniversary of World IPv6 launch. And there are updates from different regions. So regions like RN, RIPE, uh, APNIC, they are, they are evolving differently. The levels of v6 deployment are different if you want to get some information how things are going in the world and your company actually operates and does business around the world it's it's very good data point to have yeah world ipv6 launch day we were one thing more i want to say about the statistics if you think about it that's also a good thing to look at top 10 countries the ones that are mentioned in the table behind me the average of that is 36% more than 36%. So again, that's more than one in three person in those countries on average can access content on V6. Another reason why you should enable, why your companies should enable V6 if you haven't done it yet. Then uh, if you look at the top 25, then it's almost 25%. So there, the argument that there is not enough V6 deployment doesn't stand anymore. Uh, but I hope that I'm preaching to the converted and then you just take this message, take my slides and show it to your CTO or CEOs and tell them like we really need to do it if that w it's not the case yet. One final bit on this, the reason why we should move on with V6 is the price evolution. And this is information that I got in my uh, daily job just to uh, talk with my, my managers about this. Uh, how this has evolved and it's very important. 2015 is the date when, uh, in early 2015, Arin ran out. You know that they've got a different allocation policy. They basically went to the bottom of the barrel. They've got nothing left. While RIPE, you can still get slash 22, even though that's actually going to change most likely as well to last slash 24. So you're not getting even 1,000. You are getting 256 addresses. So it's getting tighter and tighter. The price is going up. So this, well, here the trend was that the price was going out by going down. But if you look at 2017, it has grown to uh, 14.5 14, $14 dollars per IP address. So if you do a, that, that's the public information. I know from private sources that the price per IP is actually even higher to 15, 16 dollars. So if you do simple maths, slash 16, which is only for 65,000 addresses, it's going to cost you a million dollars. So is it really worth it or you rather move on with, C's, with, C's, with V6? So just food for thought. So if you are not a member of the council, some people mention that they are here for the first time, they never heard about us before. I also go to UK Network Operator Forum meetings and I say, well, how many people were at the council meeting? There are two hands like, okay, people come and join us. You know, This is a forum and platform for discussion, for sharing information. We give you information, but I hope also that during the breaks, you will take the opportunity to engage with each other and just find out what others are doing talk to us, you can join us, it's for free. And uh, I hope to see you at our next event, which will probably be sometime during the spring 2018.